Hello, everyone. Welcome to your partner in education, Agile Rank Mate. Today, in this episode of AEEE Training, we're going to be looking at some sample questions with their solutions, so that you can prepare yourself for the AEEE exam. So today, let's start off with our first question. This one's from physics. The electric current in a circuit is given by I equals I naught sine omega t plus theta. What's the dimension of theta? Well, before jumping to conclusions, we need to understand what the theta is in this particular expression. So I, or the current, stands for I naught, which is the original value of the current, times sine of omega t plus phi. Omega t plus phi is the phase difference. Now, theta by itself refers to the initial phase of the current, and omega t is the you know expression that g dictates what phases it will grow through. So the word phase here basically stands for angle. So theta here is basically an angle. And angles are the only, what do we call, angles are the only uh, quantities which have a unit but are dimensionless. So therefore the dimensions of theta do not exist because theta is a dimensionless quantity. Even though angles are expressed in radians and solid angles are expressed in steradians, both of these are having units, but they are dimensionless quantities. So therefore, option D is the right answer. Next question. When a projectile is at the highest point on its trajectory, the potential and kinetic energies are respectively max minimum, maximum and minimum, minimum and zero, zero and maximum, maximum and zero. So the first one in the series, like maximum, minimum, zero, and maximum, these stand for potential energy. Minimum, zero, maximum, and zero stands for kinetic energy. So how do we solve this question? Well, for that, you need to understand projectile motion. So in a projectile motion, the object undergoes motion in a plane. So basically, it goes at a velocity u u has two components it has a sine component and a cos component basically a horizontal and a vertical component now as we move along the horizontal component which is u cos theta it stays constant however u sine theta because of the fact that there is acceleration due to gravity it becomes zero and then it increases again so let's consider this to be the highest highest point which is h max so in this case, the velocity will only be u cos theta. The value of u sine theta would be zero. So that's what you need to know. Now, how do we calculate potential energy? Potential energy is calculated as mg times h, mass times gravity, acceleration due to gravity times the height. Now, at the highest point, um, the height of the object would be h max. So therefore, potential energy would be maximum since, you know, it's at the highest point, so therefore the potential energy would be the maximum. So, options which do not say the potential energy is maximum would be incorrect, which in this case is options B and C. So we have option D or option A to be the correct answer. So we need to make, we need to know whether the kinetic energy is min minimum or zero. So how do we calculate kinetic energy? Kinetic energy is calculated as half mv squared, where v stands for the velocity. Now in this particular case, the velocity is u cos theta, so therefore, the kinetic energy would be half mu cos theta squared. Now, u cos theta is constant, it does not change at all. The value of u sine theta is zero, so therefore there, this is the minimum value for velocity. And since velocity is minimum, the kinetic energy is also minimum. So therefore, the correct option isn't option D, it is option A. When a projectile is at the highest point on its trajectory, the potential energy is maximum and the kinetic energy is minimum. Now let's look at a question of chemistry. 
the actual atomic weight of an element is represented in. Number, U, AMU, Mu. So, um, when we're talking about actual atomic weight, we're not talking about the gram atomic mass. Because the gram atomic mass uh, deals with, you know, um, the mass of a mole of the at a mole of atoms. The actual atomic weight has a different unit, and this is what we need to find out. Number usually refers to atomic number, and it, and it refers to the number of protons uh, in an atom. So therefore, option A is incorrect. Option D mu stands for permittivity, which, which is a physical quantity. So therefore, option D is incorrect. Uh, then we have options B and C, U as well as AMU. Now, <sighs> technically, both of these are correct. However, the most appropriate one is option B, U. Now, AMU stands for Atomic Mass Unit. U stands for Unified Mass. Now, both of these are the same quantity. It's basically 1 by 12th of the mass of a car carbon atom. Now, how do we uh, how do we say AMU is wrong and U is right? Well, the reason is that AMU was the original uh, name for that unit, which is one by twelfth of the mass of carbon atom. But then they decided to change its representation from AMU to unified mass. So therefore, that's the uh, scientific term that we're using currently for the actual atomic weight. So therefore, option B, unified mass, is the most appropriate option. Option C is incorrect because it was used earlier. It's not used now among scientists. Mu is permittivity, number is atomic number, so all, all of the others are incorrect. Option B, unified mass, is the right option. Next question. The measurement of a thermodynamic property known as temperature is based on zeroth law of thermodynamics, first law of thermodynamics, second law of thermodynamics, Kirchhoff's equation. So which of these is the correct option? Let's look at each of the options. Kirchhoff's equation goes like this. Delta H equals to delta U plus delta NRT. So basically, enthalpy is related to internal energy. Change in enthalpy is related to change in internal energy and the change in number of moles, ideal gas constant, and the temperature. So therefore, this product is continually changing and delta U also changes and both of these will uh, c contribute to the change in enthalpy. Now here temperature is used and it does not, it's not based on the Kirchhoff's equation, it's used in the Kirchhoff's equation, so therefore option D is incorrect. What about option C, the second law of thermodynamics? Now the second law of thermodynamics deals with heat loss when in converting energy, so like when you convert one form of energy to another, there's always heat loss, so therefore no conversion is 100% efficient. Now, um, it all, now this means that randomness, or entropy as we call it, always increases. So this second law particularly deals with entropy, so therefore option B, I mean option C is incorrect. Option B goes for first law of thermodynamics, which says that the change in internal energy is the difference between heat loss and work done. So therefore, option B is also incorrect because it doesn't deal with temperature. The correct answer is option A, the zeroth law of thermodynamics. The zeroth law of thermodynamics states that if two thermodynamic systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they're also in equilibrium with each other. Now, how does this relate to temperature? Difference of physical heat is measured as temperature. So that's how option A is the right option. Now let's look at some math questions. If A, B, and C are the arithmetic mean, geometric mean, and harmonic mean, respectively, of two equal numbers, then which of these relations are true? So how do we solve this question? Well, we will consider M 
and n to be the two equal numbers. So we don't all want to use the same measurement because if we use the same measurement then we won't get any of these relations. Which is why we're using two different variables m and n to represent the equal numbers. So what's the arithmetic mean? The arithmetic mean a is basically m plus n over 2. Arithmetic mean is the same thing as average. So we know that m plus n over 2 is a, so therefore m plus n, the sum of m and n, would turn out to be 2 times the average. We can consider this to be equation 1. Next we have the geometric mean, which is represented by b, and the geometric mean um, turns out to be under root of mn. So the product of m and n under a square root turns out to be b. So therefore, if we square on both sides, you get b square equals mn. We can consider this to be equation 2. And finally, we have harmonic mean, which is basically the average between the reciprocals of m and n. So that turns out to be 2mn over m plus n. So what we're basically doing is 1 over 1 by m plus 1 by n, which when you calculate turns out to be 2mn over m plus n. Now this value is equal to c, and it's equation 3. Now what we do is we put in the value of m plus n and mn into equation 3. So this equation, c will now turn out to be 2 times of b squared over m plus n, which is 2a. So the 2 gets cancelled, c equals b squared over a. So therefore, the equation will now turn out to be b squared equals to ac. So therefore, the correct option is option c, b squared equals a3. All the other relations are incorrect because we need to, because when we put in the am, gm, and hm of the two equal numbers, I mean, if any two numbers, we find out that b squared equals ac turns out to be the correct relation. So the square of the geometric mean is the product of the arithmetic mean as well as the harmonic mean. Now let's look at the final question for the day. If sine theta is 1 by root 5 and tan theta is 1 by 2, then find cos theta. So <clears throat> how do we solve this question? Now we will consider cos theta, the value of cos theta to be x so as to use it in a relation. Now, in, trig in trigonometry, especially in a right angle triangle, um, the relation between these three trigonometric functions goes like this. Tan theta is basically t sine theta over cos theta. Now, how does that work? The reason is that um, sine theta is um, base over hypotenuse, and cos theta is height upon hypotenuse. So when you and tan theta is base upon height. So when you divide sine theta by cos theta, the hypotenuse gets cancelled, and you get base over height, which is the same value as tan theta. So, so now we can use this relation to solve this particular question. Now put in the values, we get one by two to be equal to one over root five. Divide that by x. So what we do, we will um, change this x to the left hand side and 1 by 2 to the right hand side. So therefore technically x is now on the left hand side and the right hand side um, 1 by 2 goes under the divide 1 by 2 becomes the divisor. So it becomes 1 by root 5 over 1 by 2. So um, if, if a fraction is in the denominator then it's then the, the, fr the fraction's divisor will turn out to be the numerator of the bigger fraction. So therefore, 1 by 2 in the denominator would go up into the numerator. So therefore, that it, now the value of x becomes 2 over root 5. And since we know that x is cos theta, so therefore the value of cos theta would now turn out to be 2 over root 5. 1 by root 5 is t sine theta, and the other options turn out to be incorrect numerically because this relation has been scientific. It, this relation is what we use in order to solve this kind of questions. So the value of cos theta is 2 by root 5 if sine theta is 1 by root 5 and tan theta is 1 by 2. So that concludes this episode of AEEE training. We hope you found this episode interesting. For more of our useful and interesting content, don't forget to subscribe to Agile Rank Mate. 
your partner in education. If you want to get the latest updates about our channel, then don't forget to hit the notifications icon present below the video. So until the next webisode, take care, stay alert, bye-bye for now.